Tonight, top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Crumbling Europe is in dire need of change. Four would-be European Union leaders stage first televised debate. Israel demolishes EU-funded shelters in West Bank and implications for universities of the mass immigration referendum. Plus, the EU-US love-hate relationship. Now, very exciting things are happening on Twitter at the moment with such a foray of conversations about Europe and the EU elections. We're being kept very, very busy passing out the facts and information to help people support their arguments. If you have questions about Europe and the EU, and just mention at the E unit in your Twitter post and we'll look into it for you. It's Wednesday, 30th of April. Glad you could join us. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Crumbling Europe is in dire need of change. This is part one of the serialization of Roger Bootle's new book, The Trouble with Europe. And it argues that the EU has reached breaking point, helped by the role of the euro. The EU is a malfunctioning construct for today's world, and even more so for tomorrow's. It needs either to undergo fundamental reform or to break up. It was conceived in a world of large blocs dominated by the Cold War rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union, and before globalization and the rise of the emerging markets. Its agenda of harmonization and integration inevitably leads to excessive regulation and the smothering of competition. This is largely why, in contrast to the prevailing view that the EU has been an economic success, its economic performance has in fact been relatively poor. If nothing changes, the EU's share of world GDP is set to fall sharply and with it Europe's influence in the world. Meanwhile, the EU is becoming more unpopular. Most people do not want to press on to a full political union and increasing numbers of its citizens want to leave the EU altogether. European integration is the great issue of our day. Well, the article continues in substantial detail to support its argument against the European Union and makes very interesting reading. Four would-be European Union leaders stage first televised debate. Four would-be presidents of the European Union's executive arm clashed Monday evening in the first debate of its kind, each making a direct pitch on live TV for the support of European voters. Scar Keller of Germany from Europe's Green parties directly asked viewers, do you want to have more of the old politics for the European Union or do you want fresh ideas? The debate held in the Dutch city of Maastricht before an auditorium of mostly students and young people brought together four of the five candidates vying to become European Commission president following May's 22nd to 25th European parliamentary election. For the first time, the parliamentary election results are to be taken into account when the EU's 28 member states nominate a person to fill the position. Now that nominee must also be ratified by the new parliament. It's very encouraging to see many young people getting involved in the political process. However, this article highlights a core functional problem that very much needs to be addressed within the European institution. The President of the Commission and indeed the other 28 Commissioners are appointed from within the EU institution itself. And whilst this debate was fascinating and very useful to hear the Minister speak, it is a sad reality that not one member of the audience can vote any of them into or out of power. Israel demolishes EU-funded shelters in West Bank. Israel has demolished several European Union-funded humanitarian housing shelters in a highly sensitive strip of the West Bank land near Jerusalem, an EU official said on Friday. On April 9th, three of some 18 residential structures were demolished in Jabal al-Baba, 
an area outside the sprawling settlement of Mal Adumin. A spokesman for the EU's delegation to the Palestinian territories told Associated Free Press. Now, the tin huts used to house Palestinians made homeless by severe winter weather at the beginning of the year and were partially funded by EU member states, the official said. Israel issued demolition orders on all 18 structures in February, the official said, and EU delegates raised this with the Israeli authorities, both at the time of and after the demolitions. The EU official said only that there were ongoing discussions with Israeli authorities over the demolitions, but a report by Euraktiv, a Brussels-based news service, said diplomats were demanding financial compensation. We should ask for compensation from Israel whenever EU-funded humanitarian aid projects are destroyed, your active quoted an anonymous diplomat as saying. Implications for universities of the mass immigration referendum. On 9th of February this year, Swiss voters approved a referendum aimed at restricting immigration to Switzerland. Since the measure might contradict the principle of free movement of people, which is one of the principles of the European Union, the EU has suspended all current negotiations with Switzerland until the situation is resolved. This decision will have a serious negative impact on students and researchers, since Switzerland will no longer be a part of the Erasmus and Horizon 2020 programmes for students' exchange and research financing in the upcoming academic year. Yet more problems for the Swiss higher education community might develop as a result of the referendum, depending on its implementation. Now, of course, the UK has no such luxury of questioning or addressing any issues in relation to immigration from European nations. Of course, Nick Clegg and David Cameron would spout the rhetoric that they can, and they are. Well, let me remind them both of precisely what the law says. And I quote, Where a national statute conflicts with community law, it is the statute that must give way. Community law states that every EU citizen has free movement throughout all EU member states. The EU-US love-hate relationship. The elaborate gavotte between the American and European economies continues. While the Federal Reserve has begun to wind down its controversial quantitative easing or QE program, the European Central Bank the Federal Reserve of the Eurozone has announced it is considering a QE program of its own. It is a belated acknowledgement, if not an outright admission, from Mario Draghi, President of the ECB, that five years of the European Union's austerity policy has failed to lift the Eurozone nations out of the economic mire. The ECB has presided over a wholly unnecessary triple-dip recession in the Eurozone and sparked off a bitter rift between the German-dominated European Union bureaucracy and the Mediterranean nations that must endure the rigours imposed from Brussels, all to little avail. Now, we here at the unit also have news and information coming in from sources that we cannot disclose at this point, but it looks initially as though there are large-scale economic shenanigans taking place between the Western central banks. Enormous transfers, and we are talking trillions of euros in transfers through banks in London and on into Europe. Zero Hedge reports that Belgium spent an amount equivalent to a whole year of its gross domestic product buying US Treasury bonds last month, which strikes us as a very odd investment to make for a country in the midst of a European economic crisis. Now, this is your chance to help us. If you have any information or stories relating to economy or economic transactions of this nature, then please do send those in to us. Now, you can do this anonymously via the feedback page in the contact section of our website. Well, here's your final reminder for tomorrow. We have another live interactive table talk show that you can get involved with. We're going to be taking a look at the European elections, which are to be held on May 22nd. This includes looking at candidates' profiles for the new president of the European Commission. Oh, those are the ones that you can't vote on, by the way. We'll be looking at the structure of the European parliamentary system and hoping to unravel how it works. I mean, it's always helpful to actually know what you're voting for. 
And how do the mainstream national parties' campaigns relate to Europe? We want to hear from you. We want to include and try to answer your questions. And so please do email those into us via the contacts page of our website. Now, we're looking for guests to join us on the show. You will need a Google Plus account, webcam and microphone. The show preparations start at 11.30 a.m. UK time. And the show goes live to the front page of our website and our YouTube channel from 12 noon until 1 o'clock. We're all done and dusted by 1.15, so what are you waiting for? Take a look at the Help page in our Resources section of the website for details of how you can join us on the panel. Now, there will be a phone-in and SMS text available, and you will be on hand when the lines open to take your calls. And better still, you can text your comments and questions to the same number. Of course, you can comment via Twitter by mentioning at the e-unit in your post. Now, this is only the second live show we've done, and we fully expect there to still be a few teething issues, and we hope you'll stick with us as we iron these out. We are bringing you these shows via a state-of-the-art medium, and you know what they say about technology. Now, this week in our video library, we have several short films, all relating to the European Union and the European elections. And these include National Party campaign, party political broadcasts, and the presidential campaign broadcasts by the candidates for the European Commission. Finally, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.